Hi everybody. Now I want to introduce you today with this beautiful shot of this cloudless day here in Milan and this gorgeous strong sun. Now here is my 20 watts uh, solar panel is catching the strong sun we have today and of course this is gonna mean that my battery is gonna be full. And here's the square wave that the solar charge controller is putting out and the voltage of the battery held at 13.7 volts and of course I just connected this um, little power bank so that we can charge it up. But today I actually wanna continue my work on this solar charge controller that I'm building on this breadboard and as you can see from the last video I have actually added three transistors and well a little bit of circuitry and uh, that's the high side MOSFET driver and of course that's what I'm actually gonna talk about in this video. Now of course we need a high side MOSFET driver because uh, we need to switch on this MOSFET a voltage which goes between the 12 volts of the battery and the 22 volts we get from our little charge pump circuit. And of course to do that we have just a square wave which goes between 0 and 5 volts. So we need to add a little bit of circuitry in order to do this. But I want to say that um, we have actually partially already solved this problem in the charge pump driver circuit we developed in the last video because look we actually have used the circuit to actually uh, convert a square wave which goes between 0 and 5 volts in a square wave which goes between 0 and 12 volts so what we can actually do is we can actually reconfigure the circuit so that it doesn't switches between 0 and 12 volts but it switches between 12 volts and 22 volts and of course that's what I did here. The circuit is exactly the same but of course on the output we don't have the charge pump capacitor and the two diodes you can see them right here but we actually have a low value resistor for our N channel announcement mode MOSFET. But this actually brings us to another problem because to switch this transistor on we need a voltage which goes well at least 0 0.7 volts above 12 volts and of course we don't have that we have a square wave which goes between 0 and 5 volts so we have to add a little bit of circuitry in order to do this and here it is that circuitry is just three more resistors and a transistor now of course this transistor is still NPN which uh, of course is very nice because we still use all NPN transistors in all the circuitry for our solar charge controller. Now the way the circuit works is actually very very simple because when this uh, square wave is actually high this transistor is turned on and pulls the base of this transistor to ground so this transistor is not on and this transistor is polarized through these resistors and allow current flow from the 22 volts power supply directly to the gate of the MOSFET. But if this square wave is actually low, this transistor is not on, so this transistor is polarized through these two resistors and so if this transistor goes to 12 volts the gate of the MOSFET is pulled down to 12 volts through this transistor and the diode. So our high side MOSFET driver looks like it's gonna work, but let's test it on the oscilloscope. So I've connected this 9 volt alkaline battery uh, to the solar charge controller and I've actually put this pot um, into one of the inputs of the LM324 so that we can actually vary the amount, the high to low ratio of the square wave. And uh, here is the oscilloscope probe, which is actually connected directly uh, to the gate of the MOSFET. And actually, the ground of the scope is connected not to ground but to the positive of the battery. So we should see 
a voltage which goes between 0 volts and well about 6 to 7 volts on the oscilloscope and of course that's exactly what we have and uh, we can see then the amplitude of the square wave is actually well pretty low it's just 4.84 volts but that's normal because we are just powering it with a 9 volt battery if we actually just put a big 12 volt lead acid this voltage is going to be more than high enough to completely saturate the MOSFET and as I put this uh, potentiometer in the circuit we can see that as I rotate it the pulse width of the square wave increases or decreases you, go, you know you can turn it all the way up to 100% or to 0% so the eyesight driver is actually working pretty well and another thing which is actually very important is that the transition between the high and the low part of the square wave is pretty fast and of course it is because you, you can see that if I zoom in on the time scale actually now I am, I am at 20 microseconds per division well it's actually pretty crisp and let's just see the falling edge of the square wave so I'm just gonna move this right here and oh, a little bit. I'm on the same 20 microseconds per division, and well, it's actually very, very crisp, and that's actually good. You want this this transition to be as crisp as possible, because uh, when the MOSFET, when the square wave is not on the high side and it's not even on the low side, is actually is actually in between, we're actually holding the MOSFET in is partially conductive region and that's not good because if we have a big resistance here of course this MOSFET is gonna dissipate quite a bit of heat so we want this transistor this transition to be as quick as possible and I have to say that I'm actually very very happy with this look at that that's not beautiful really is it and just as a comparison, I have connected channel 2 of the oscilloscope directly to the output from the op amp and we see the input square wave. Now we, we can actually see that it is actually negative because I still have the ground of the scope to the positive of the battery. But that's really nice, you know, it's uh, very very crisp, it's, it's almost as crisp as the input. And of course keep in mind that we are actually have loaded this because the gate capacitance of the MOSFET is actually well it's responsible for this little curviness uh, if you we can see that you actually remove the MOSFET well it is much much crisper you know no MOSFET MOSFET no MOSFET MOSFET no MOSFET MOSFET we can see that, oh, yeah, I'm just getting some mains, um, just by, just by touching it. Oh, anyway. And another thing we can say about this is that the high side driver circuit is actually not inverting because the high side of the square wave is the high side of the output and the low side is the low side. So we, ha we are actually not inverting it. And that's because... Uh, the circuit, which is actually the same we used in the charge pump driver, is actually inverting. But we actually have an inversion here, but we have another inversion here. And Matt says that two inversion is no inversion. And that's really what we have. Uh, I'm just going to probe the uh, charge pump and we can see how it actually inverts the input in relation to the output. So I just uh, connected the channel 1, I think, uh, channel 1 of the oscilloscope to the output and channel 2 to the input of the charge pump driver circuit. And uh, I have actually moved the ground of the scope to ground so that actually everything is nice and reference to ground. But we can actually see on the oscilloscope that the actual low side uh, of the input is the eye side of the output and vice versa. So this circuit actually inverts 
the input in relation to the output. But in this case, it doesn't matter because we're actually just fitting it into a capacitor and then we're just smoothing it out with another capacitor. So it doesn't matter in this situation. So that's all the time we have for today. And in the future, I may want to transfer the circuit from breadboard to uh, you know, perf board or maybe a printed circuit board. But we'll still have to talk about this because uh, in a future video I have to talk about the voltage reference and how to set the set point for the pulse width modulation to take place in the circuit. But I think that in my next video I'm gonna talk you about what actually PWN means and the positive effects that PWM has uh, when it comes to recharging a battery, but especially a 12 volt lead acid battery. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in my next video.